everybody, so welcome back. Last session began with the Taroka reading. You all consulted the fates regarding your purpose in the Darklands of Barovia and how you may be able to escape. After receiving several cryptic clues and learning a bit more about Petra Rolinovich's connection to this place, you all decided to retire for the evening. Um, you all, of course, looked through her pictures, her paintings, her drawings, sketches, all of the different things in her notebooks, um, and quickly discerned that she was drawing Barovia, and she was drawing experiences of her past lives that she spent here. Um, more details were not quite forthcoming just yet, so you all decided to retire for the evening. During the night, the Mardikovs arrived in Kresk to report that their wine supply had been poisoned, and their winery overrun. Burgomeister Kreskov, the, essentially the mayor of Kresk, sent them on their way. Although they appeared to want a word with you all, Kreskov was having none of it, and appeared to not exactly defend you all, but deny the Mardikovs any sort of retribution they may seek within the walls of his town. So he sent them on their way, presumably towards Valakai, where the rest of their family and their tavern are. Kreskov then went inside for a drink, and you all sat with him for a while, talking with him, and you learned of his ill son, very ill son, and of the strange calm that had settled over, over Barovia for these past some 20 years, saying that the terrors and the stories of the past are just that now, past, although they now seem to be starting once again. Next morning, you met a far more sober Ismark, um, an individual that had been featured in several of Petra's um, drawings and paintings and whatnot, and you all learned was the brother to one of Petra's earlier incarnations, a young woman by the name of Irina, who had met a unknown end the last time that she had been here in Barovia. After conversing with Ismark, him going on his way, vowing that he would help you if he could, but that he had his own issues to attend to for the time being, you all then made your way up to the Abbey of St. Markovia, the large structure, um, almost like a almost like a, a mission of, of sorts at the top of the hill overlooking Kresk, uh, with a hope to talk to the abbot, a supposedly powerful being that inhabited the place. Although as you approached, you quickly discovered what the yipping and howling and strange noises that you could be heard in the night at Kresk were. Strange creatures, vaguely humanoid but with bestial and animalistic features, seem to be running wild throughout the place. Two of them met you at the gates and allowed you entrance into the abbey. And while that one of those individuals was going inside to, uh, to let the abbot know that you were here, another attacked you. And you promptly killed it, which is reasonable as it was very much so trying to kill you all. And when your guide returned, he did not seem upset, surprised, or even the slightest bit bothered by the murder of presumably one of his friends or family members. He instead just grabbed the body nonchalantly and dragged it with him while he instructed you all to follow him to the abbot. He then brought you into the main hall of the interior of the abbey and to a figure seated behind a large wooden table surrounded by chairs a elegant meal seemingly set out. At this table was a handsome young man in a dark brown monk's robe. He gently took a woman sitting next to him by the hand and stood, a painted holy symbol depicting the sun hanging from a chain around his neck. He moved with the grace of a saint as he introduced himself to you all as the abbot. is where we are going to pick up today. All 
Alright, everyone. So, as the abbot rises, greets you all, the mongrel folk who had come in introduced you all, said that you were here to visit with him. And... asked that he resurrect his friend. And the abbot did so. A sheen of golden light shining over the mongrel folk's body before it stood up, spasmed a bit, and then was helped back outside by the other. Which now leaves you all with the abbot and the woman at his side. The abbot would, stand, would approach you all Welcome. It has been quite some time since we've seen those of your type in these parts. What brings you here? We are new to this land. We seek answers, perhaps aid. Oh. Answers I have. There is nothing that happens in these lands that I do not see. Kind of distantly looks around and past you all, kind of just adding to the effect of what he just said. It's aid. Aid, though. Aid is only delivered to the worthy. Come. Sit. Join me at my table. He gestures towards the woman next to him. This is Vasilka. Say hello, Vasilka. Oh. Is that actually what she sounds like? She does not actually speak as much as she lets out a bit of a groan. I, I'm just gonna sit down with no response. Does as she look like she's in distress? As you all approach, you can see that Vasilka is not exactly as she appears to be. She... You can see lines intersecting at weird angles along her neck, her arms. Um. Oh. Oh. Now, okay. They both sit. And... The abbot then asks, How long have you all been in this place? Um... M mere days, I believe. Yeah, I believe we've been here for maybe, uh, two or three days. Something See. brought us here. So, I feel I may know the thing that brought you here. The vampire. Gabbit yeah, slowly gives a nod. This place, this place is our prison, mine, and the Dark Lord Strahd. I'm gonna whisper to, are we on the opposite side of the table of, of this guy? Yes. Okay, I'm gonna whisper to whoever's sitting next to me, probably Sam, um, and say, Whatever we do, do not mention what we just learned about Pietra. I guess I'll whisper back. I already forget. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask the abbot. What do you know of this forgotten god? Forgotten. Is that who you worship here? I worship the Morning Lord, friend. I am a servant of Lathander. I've heard of Lathander. 
we, on our way here to the Abbey, we heard of a forgotten god or lost god. Do you know anything of it? Lysander. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, that was it. Is it the same person or the same god as Lysander? No. Oh, faceless god is what it was. Sorry. Right. Faceless god. The faceless god is a pretender. Is his temple the same temple of Amber by Mount Gacchus? Nods. Well defended, dangerous place. You are to go towards the temple. Kind of pauses for a moment. Best gather your strength. The beings that made this place for Strahd reside within, and they do not enjoy being disturbed. I mean... What beings? The dark entities that control this place and give power to those they see fit. The ones that imprisoned me and Strahd together in this place, granted us both lordship over these lands. You are lord here as well. I am! But a prisoner? How can you be a lord and a prisoner? I must atone, as Strahd must atone. You sound like uh, you're at the same level as this guy. Like, can you, uh, you help us out with uh, well, what we're looking for? I and as I said that, I'm gonna, as I said that, I'm gonna look for any like signs of like, you know, and I, I know he's like he's masked up, right? I'm assuming. Was that? Uh, this person is like masked up. Uh, no, like, he's not wearing a mask. Okay, so I'm just looking for any facial for any like any thing, any you know just how he reacts to me asking if he's on the same level as Strahd. Okay, uh, go ahead and make an insight check. Seventeen. Seventeen, okay. So with a seventeen, you see blank, emotionless features from this person. Um, do we have, do I have access to, um, to my, uh, pack with paper and, and quill? Yeah, you have everything gonna, that you would have taken with you. Okay, I'm gonna pull it out and write a note to to Aurelia and um, the vampire hunter. I forget his name. Brett Varanis. Varanis. <laughs> um, and I'm gonna make sure that Abbott doesn't see what it. Obviously, he can see me writing it, but I don't want him to see what I'm writing. And I'm gonna have my unseen servant take it to Aurelia and Varanis, and it's gonna say. I don't believe this is the broken wizard, as we initially thought. I'm just going to look at uh, Boavar and then just nod, and then just look back at the abbot. Still featureless, looking towards you. He says, a wizard. See, oh, a wizard. <laughs> you need not hide anything from me, my friends. There is no need. Not that we're apparently able either. Hmm. He then speaks directly into all of your minds. This place is mine, as it is Strahd's. He then okay. looks towards you, Bolivar, and says, And please, relay my condolences to your traveling companions. It is a terrible tragedy that Tatiana... Tatiana's spirit 
has found her way here once again. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm going to, like, my eyes are going to be as wide as they can go, and I'm going to look at the rest of the people. Um, so these faceless gods who imprisoned you and Strahd here, were they the ones that preserved Strahd the first time he was killed? He nods. So he can't just be killed. As I he was almost destroyed the last time. Looks around towards all of you. The last time Strahd fought for Tatiana, then she was known as Irina Kolyana. Last time was different. Different than the countless others that had come before. Hundreds. The last time he took her and he turned her as he had done many times before. But she turned on him. The dark lords of this place reached out to the young woman and offered her vengeance. A chance to take all that Strahd had and retake all that he had taken from her. Dark powers flowed into her and she struck down the dark lord herself carrying the vampire's head as a grim trophy. But she could not complete the task, you see. Her new friends, the ones who had helped her and saved her countless times, the last part of the pact with these dark beings was to slay those who had protected her. She could not, would not, and was slain. And so, her weakness allowed the cycle to repeat again. And now, now Strahd seems intent on not allowing the past to repeat. He has been absent to these past years, but I could still sense him. 20 years. Nods. Hence mm. the unnatural peace. We have a way to ensure his permanent demise. I'm sure since you are presumably omnipotent that you've read our minds about our tarot reading. He says, I had sensed the divination taken place. Tell me, what were you shown? A treasure. A treasure that lies in a dragon's house. Once clean, now corrupted. We need dragon's help finding house. it. This dragon's treasure might house. Be the key. Odds. Dragon's house can be none other than Argon Vostholt, a forsaken remnant of a once noble order. He says, Dragon's house is a manor seated at the base of Mount Gaucus. He would provide you with directions so that you would be able to see it on your map. Uh, I'm going to look at the group Mount Gacus. This is where we were told the Temple of Amber is. Perhaps this is the best course of action for us. Two of our say... destinations lie in the, same, in the same way. Yeah, he would say that the house lies at the base of the mountain and the temple lies at its, pe uh, lies at its peak. 
Well, at least we won't have to make many trips. At least we'll, we know. Don't have to go too far. I mean, it's down on a mountain. I mean... What you else said would that... you show? <clears throat> go ahead, sorry. Um, all of our, continue. Do we tell him the rest? Um, I'm gonna kind of look the at the rest of it, silently look at everyone else to see if they approve. I think we've established that there are no secrets. Um, so he has spoken directly into your minds, which is enough to inform you all that he is telepathic. Um, uh, so knowing what you all... Say, go ahead. Uh, I was gonna say, uh, I'm gonna just... Knowing that this, I think this is the thing what Sam would say either this time. Just to test this out, what number am I thinking of? <laughs> and I'm gonna try and and I'm gonna try and actively like shove that number in a subconscious and as deep as I can shove it. Okay, so you're not letting it be on your surface thoughts. No, I am like I am like putting that in like a core memory or something. Fantastic. So he would pause and then you would see him looking at you. And he says, I am afraid I am above your games. Son uh -huh. of a bitch. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Um. Parlor tricks. I, I, he would kind clearly... of take a deep breath and you see him straighten. His brow furrows. Sam, you would recognize that as the very first sign of emotion that he's shown. <laughs> The room darkens just ever so slightly, but he seems to brighten, seeming to cast dark, shadowy silhouettes behind himself for a brief moment before he collects himself and everything returns to normal. Mm. You said that you and Strahd were imprisoned here together as penitents. No, for it's... what? He looks out the window towards a pair of mongrel folk that appear to be kicking around a cow pie or something. He says, The family that overlooked this place, that looked over this place, they prayed and prayed to Lathander to change their form, to give them power. My lord, cared not for their plight, but I could not turn away, so I came to them. I wished to give them what they wished. So I changed them. He gestures widely as if he just as if he's talking about some grand act that he performed. I gave them their new forms. And it drove them mad. Um, on my surface thoughts, I clearly don't, still don't trust this guy, but I'm going to continue. Um, so on, on that him. note, real quick, Boulevard, it is safe to assume that you all can keep your surface thoughts clear, um, if you attempt to. Okay. I will attempt to. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll make it pretty obvious that I don't, still don't fully trust him, okay. but other than that, uh, and I'll, I'll tell him, yes. I do have questions about your family as well. Your family. But first, more answers. The shepherd. We were told to find the mother, she who gave birth to evil. Something of Queen Ravenova? Van Royden? Ravenovia. Ravenovia. Van Royden. Do you know anything of her? Or where her, where she might be found. He says, I know all. What else were you shown? One thing we weren't shown is where she can be found. I may be able to tell you. Mm. With the full picture. You see... I wish for Strahd to leave this place as you all do. He may take different approaches, different means to the same end. 
I wish to leave Tatiana Petra, as you know her, her role here by presenting Strahd with the perfect bride. Basilka, and she stands up. Show them what you've learned. And she begins to set a table perfectly. All these, all of these stereotypically housewifey tasks, she begins going about them, not speaking to anybody. And the abbot, seemingly proud, nods and then turns back towards you. How do you intend to stop him? What have the fates shown you? What else? The marionette. He said to look to great heights, find the beating heart of the castle. He waits nearby. He will. Rarely does he leave the side of the heart unless he must. Is he, Strahd? What else were you shown? All that I see happening here is you getting information from us and still no answers. You've shown us where the dragon's houses, but other than that, you've answered nothing. It is your turn to fulfill your end of the bargain. Where is the mother? Mother is where she has been these past hundreds of years. And your wizard. I know of only one wizard who could challenge the fates enough to help you. But... You have told me nothing I did not already know. What can you do for me? We're going to kill Strahd. But I do not wish him dead. You're a devotee of Lythander. Lythander wishes vampires dead. How can the a servant of the Morning Lord not wish those who thrive in the darkness to live. His face goes very stony for a moment. I have fallen from my father's favor. His wishes are foreign to me, strange, and so I must act in a way that is not of his teaching. To show him that I have learned. I wish Strahd to leave this place of his own free will. You have all tried countless times to destroy the beast. You always fail. I have seen dozens of groups just like yours fall bloody at his feet. Now I ask again, what can you do for me? And just as he finishes saying that, you all hear a cacophony of barks and yips and howling coming from outside. And you begin to hear the shouts of a man outside as well. You hear him shouting, please, please just let me see him. And the shouting and howling and yipping continues until five or six of the mongrel folk bring Burgomeister Kreskov, dragging him into the room oh, and God. throw him onto the ground. Wow. Kreskov gets onto his knees and gets up and kind of gets his hands and puts them on his head, very much in like a prayer. He says, Please! Please, Abbot! My son! My son has died. Taken in the night. Please, there must be something you can do. I know. I know you can save him. You can bring him back. I know you can. You all would see the faintest hint of a smile crack the abbot's face. He turns towards you all. There it is, then. There is a task that I require performed. Something that you all can do for me. 
I figured it would come to something like that. In return, I shall answer any further questions you may have. I will tell you how to enter into the Amber Temple, for you shall not enter without my help. Wards are quite impenetrable. I'll tell you of the mother and of the heart, and where you can find your wizard. All you must do for me is retrieve the last piece of completing Vasilka. A dress. A wedding dress for Strahd's new bride. What of the Burgum <laughs> what of the Burgomaster's son? In return. I will raise young Kreskov. And I'm going to immediately shoot a glance at the Burgomaster and say no. I mean, I'd be more than willing to do this. His, the Burgomaster's eyes go wide. He says, yes, yes, please. And he looks towards you all. Please, please help me. And the abbot says, and... I will raise you both, you all, twice. These lands are dangerous. Very few and very seldom are those who make it through alive. Should these lands claim you, simply bring me the body and I shall restore the fallen. <clears throat> you drive a hard uh, bargain, Burgomaster. Uh, I say I went to kind of get a little uncomfortable and just goes as is or as an animal like those back there he shakes his head and says as you are no alterations no changes no tricks and same goes for the kid right he looks towards the burgomaster who's just like got his head in his hands kneeled over himself and the abbot nods i mean and in like surface thought is just it's just a song just that 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 um so you guys just see sam relax a bit if you are a man of your word then i'm in i mean i want answers so uh, perhaps there's one further question you could answer for the matter of all of our safety as we undertake this task. Nods. Strahd, uh, you share this domain with him. Uh, can he... How far do his eyes and ears reach? Can he see and hear us now? This place is protected from his his spies as is most of Kresk watch for ravens watch for wolves even spiders could be his many eyes while you are within the walls of Kresk it has long since been a place of safety travel beyond these walls and So as long as we mind the spies, as difficult as admittedly that will be, he can't see or hear us. He is the land, but the land is not his eyes and ears. I see. Now, as a sign of good faith, I will allow you one piece to your puzzle. The wizard whom you seek, you travel to Valakai and to Lake Zarevich. Long have the tales of a mad wizard 
in the mountains and woods north of Lake Zarovich been told. Seek him out. Seek out the destruction of magic in those hills and you will find your wizard. We should go. Thank you I for agree. the information. Let's go. Um, as soon as we're out of the abbey, I'm going to tell the group, I have a feeling this man, once he completes his perfect bride, he'll be too in love with her and try to marry it himself. We have a lot to discuss, Bolivar, but man, this isn't the place. <laughs> I mean, I agree. I mean, you know, say what you will about necrophilia, but you know. Did I get a whiff of undead from that from that uh from that stitched up person? That was that was very much a stitched up corpse corpse. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Alright, so leaving um leaving the abbey then, yes? Yes. Yes. The Burgomaster would be following closely behind you all, his head down. Every now and then he would kind of look, glance up towards you all, but he wouldn't say anything to you all on the descent back down to the, uh, back down to town. So, logistical confirmation. His son is dead and he has him, or his son is missing? His son is dead oh, in no. his home. Okay. Oh, okay. You said he was taken by the Dark Ones. I was wondering if he was kidnapped? I was a little confused. It was sick. You mentioned his, his child being very ill last night when you all were speaking to him. Yeah. Yeah, it sucks because I didn't want to fucking stop by after the Abbey. Uh, Do some healing. Yep, I prepared lots of restoration just for that. Unfair. Unfair! <laughs> you just see Sam just like <laughs> oh, no. looking around, kind of a little, little pissed at himself for not going after him. Instead, he was messing around as a spider. Sir Burgermeister, um, I understand this may sound untoward, uh, and I apologize, but may we see your son? He nods and he says, "Is the least I can do." You all have agreed to save him, so yes, of course, of course. So he would take you all to his home. Oh, real quick, how are these uh, background images work looking for everybody? So good. Are they animated for, for you all? Yeah. Fantastic. Yep, they look good. good mm -hmm. Yeah, they look great. Awesome. Okay. So. He would take you towards the center of town, towards the town square. And his home is one of the many log, little log cabin-like places along. And he would let you all, he would gesture you all in. There is a woman crouched over a bed with a small shape covered by the sheet. She is softly sobbing to herself. The Burgomaster would enter and kneel next to her and say, It's going to be okay. The abbot has agreed to return him to us. She doesn't respond. He would gesture you all inside. This illness, is this common among your people. The Burgomaster rises and says, Illness is as common here as it is anywhere else, I suppose. Especially in these frigid climes. The 
not nearly as bad as the stories of old, but it does still happen. You said the Dark Ones had taken him. Did you mean anything specific by that? It's just an old saying. Someone dies here, it's assumed that dark powers that trap us here have claimed them. Sometimes, sometimes they come back to us as the young ones, but not always. Can I <clears throat> take a closer look to see what may have happened? Yeah. And I'm going to try and figure out if I can figure out anything, really. Yeah, go ahead and make a medicine check. Uh, Can I self-guidance? Yeah, right? Can you? That's a good question. I don't remember off uh, yeah, yeah, I don't remember either. Uh, I, I can't touch spell. a willing creature. Can I? Am I? Can I can? Yeah. If it, if it says touch a willing creature, then yes, you can guidance yourself. Right. Gotcha. Sad. Um, do I want to use my session? It's up to you. It's important. Yep. Go for it. I'm using it. Session. Okay. Plus guidance. That's a D6. Twenty-four. Two. Uh, it's all the same, too. Two, two, two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Fate! Whoa, fucking ninja cat is in spaz mode. Jesus. Ninja cat! <laughs> Sorry, it, I was just sitting here and, like, the cat, like, leapt from oh, behind my monitor onto the back of my desk, like, right past my face. It was... A cat tears through the Burgermeister's house. <laughs> what? <at> full speed. <laughs> Kitty was like, what happened? Okay, sorry, where were we? Uh, yes, um, Elephant Man Sam's 24. Uh, Sam, um, judging by what you can see, the bit of mucus around his mouth and nose, he appears to have died of some sort of, of, some sort of pneumonia. Fluid, and, fluid build up in his lungs and whatnot. Mm. Natural causes. Right. Um, and I'm assuming, in especially in this area, in this age, as I as I guess I would compare it to, compare it to where I'm from, there's no fixing this, you know, outside of magic. Like they they didn't have a chance, basically. Um, it's one of those things where somebody coming down with a sickness like this in a place like this, without access to healers or medical professionals of any kind, yeah, he didn't really stand much of a chance. <clears throat> okay. I'll just... Um, I think it's a just... bad idea for the Burgomaster to ask for him to be raised. Only bad things can come from that. If this was how he was meant to go, tragic as it may have been, I think let the dead lie. Actually, now that I think about it, do I know of any stories of people being raised in these um dread domains and not having like a good circumstance of... Uh... Resurrection? I would say that it's just as... Well, first off, go ahead and make a history check. And okay. for cursory information, I feel like it would be... You would hear about his hap it happening just about as much as it does everywhere else. Um, okay. There's always a risk involved in something like this, and the source is always something to be concerned about. The question on my mind is, if he's no longer a priest of Lythander... Who is giving him the ability to resurrect the dead? Exactly. I do not trust his power. Much less bringing something back from the dead. Who knows what else he might bring with him? I mean... Sir, you've been very graceful and a wonderful host. 
Um, may we impose on you once more? Do you have a a study, a spare bedroom, a place we may converse privately? He nods and leads you over to his small sitting room slash library. We will be but a moment. We we'll close the door. He All right. would leave and then close the door behind him. I'm just going to come out and say it. We have to kill Abbott. I mean, what? Do we even have a shot at killing him? I mean... <clears throat> I believe he is not as omnipotent as he makes him out, himself out to be. The mere mind-reading tricks were just cursory magic. <clears throat> it would impress those who were probably not it the in, in the initiated, but us being adventurers and being initiated. At least I could see right through it. Elephant Man Sam, I believe you saw through it as well, did you not? That actually reminds me real quick. Bolivar, um, I forgot to mention this when you first said it in the chat. Go ahead and roll an insight check. Oh, um, and then I will, um, I'll agree with Brannis, but uh, I'm going to say, um, Brannis, I do agree that we should kill him, but perhaps we should wait. Let's perform this task and get the answers we need from him. I do think Indeed. we do play along, but killing him, I don't think we should do. I think it's too much <laughs> of a risk, even if, you know, it's a curse that I spell, I still think, you know, he's still got more, you know, behind the scenes. If, if we decide not to kill him as a group, then I will go along with it, but not because of his power, but because, if anything, he is keeping the town safe in a way where the townspeople feel safe, at least. They seem to have hope and come to him for assistance, and despite his twisted ways, he seems to give them comfort from the hell that is this land. I think you're misunderstanding me. I don't. I'm not saying we need to kill him because he's insane, though he clearly is. Right, and that's he's... what you figured out with your 15 Boulevard. He is very much insane. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he's the reason the Strahd didn't die. They're imprisoned here together. The plane is tied to both of them. That's yeah, but... the reason that he didn't die. If they, if both of them don't die, then this will never end. If that Unless was true... But like, I, if how that much were do true, you really I would believe agree. that? I do not believe it. The man is insane. He has delusions of grandeur. He believes he is ruling the land just as much as Strahd, but in his own words, he has no power beyond the walls of the abbey. Yeah. If he is a co-ruler, then why? Why does Strahd hold so much more dominion over the land than he does? Not to mention, why is he seeking a bride for Strahd? Seeking his he's... acceptance. The thing he is, I not. think he is right, but I don't think it's him and Strahd. That's the big issue. Yeah, it, it, none of his story makes sense. A part of me believes that it's got something to do with Petra. The only power he has shown is his insanity <laughs> and a cursory mind reading. I used to do that in my own shows back when I was <clears throat> in my old life. Used to do it to children. I mean, I he clearly has a knack for dead people, too. I mean, look at his uh, supposed wife. Yes, he has a bit of an army, doesn't he? A little bit. I think we need to ask the faceless gods a few questions. I mean, we do, but I think we need to get this wedding dress first. I think we're all in agreement there. We probably should... F Maybe we'll find out more information when we go perform this task, and we can make a decision then. Remember to 
you know, remember to bury this, you know, this conversation and the, you know, the idea of killing him, you know, deep into your thoughts. Because he will surely, you know, pick up on that, you know, do what I did. And I, 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 I repeat, repeated a song and I kind of almost drove myself insane there, but. If he's insane as you say, he's already prepared for it. Yeah, he does not scare me. But, Sam, you're the only one who has not spoken his opinion on the situation, at least for now. What do you think? What what he does with those people is pretty messed up. Like, no one should live like that. And refer, referring to the, like, the beast folk. Mm -hmm. Um... Yeah, uh, I'll just go with what you guys go. Okay, then we will make a final decision on our way back. All right, off to find the dress, I guess. Yes. Um, okay. uh, Ez and Petra just... are still at the inn. That's true, too. Yeah. Can we just buy a dress, or...? I mean, <laughs> I don't have the skills of making a dress. I assume we have to buy one. Um, <laughs> the skies kids <laughs> work for that. One other That's thing. That's also true. <laughs> he knows about Petra. Yeah. He is seeking Strahd's. He is seeking Strahd's um, acceptance or his approval, right? So, <clears throat> if if this abbot is seeking the approval to the extent he's created a bride for Strahd to appease him. Perhaps if that doesn't work, Petra might be in danger. She's already in danger from Strahd, but this abbot, I wouldn't put it past him to try and present her to him. Strahd. Again, for approval. You're not wrong. That thing is hardly a convincing replacement. We should keep Petra safe while we go find the stress. I or mean, at least as maybe can keep an eye out or be on alert. I think she'll be fine with Ez. I mean... Well, let's have them come with us. I mean, they probably know more about wedding dresses than I do. I mean, that's true. Although I don't remember a wedding uh, dress shop where I'm from, but, you know, there could be one here. I don't know. I guess we'll, we'll ask the Burgomaster now. We'll come back into the room. See if he knows maybe where we can find a dress. He would think on it for a moment and he would say, There hasn't there hadn't been weddings in Barovia in so long, not well. Yes, I did. I did hear the Burgomaster took a new wife some five or six years ago. There was a Big to do a festival, a party. It's nothing new for Valakai, but word was it was an especially big one, a wedding ceremony. And it might have been the only time a wedding dress has been produced in these lands in hundreds of years. I would That's imagine good. she still has it. Phew. For a moment, I thought he was going to have us dig up graves for <laughs> women who are buried in a wedding dress. Would not be opposed to digging up graves. <laughs> Where Malachi, is it? then. Yes. Yeah. Well, actually, if Valakai is where we're headed, we may be able to find this broken wizard. Just north of Valakai, north of Lake Zarevich. I mean, the only problem is we might get spied on, which is going to be a concern, but... I have no doubts that Strahd knows we're here, and I have no doubts that he he senses what what we're after. 
Indeed, the evidence points to the notion that he brought us here himself. Exactly. We don't need to keep it a secret. If he was going to stop us, he would have done so already. Perhaps a part of him wants to die. I don't trust that entirely, but they'll still go. Well, um, how far away is Valakai? Um? I'll ask the Burgomeister. Right, I feel like when the abbot was describing the locations, the various places and all that, and between that and the Burgomaster's help, I believe you all can get a good look at the map now. He would have filled in the blank spaces for you. So let's go ahead, bring you all over. Don't need that box anymore. We can see the whole map, though. Why not? Okay. So he would have pointed out a few places for you all. You all know Kresk is right here. I know Kresk is there. He would have pointed this out as Valakai here. Well, I can't see that ping. Right here. Okay. Not too bad. Argon Vostholt. The House of the Dragon. It's right there. And then Lake Zarovich. And we will reveal more as you all go. But after your conversation with the Burgomaster and with the Abbot, it's safe to say that you all have a working, a working map of Barovia now. Okay, now that I see the map, um, it seems to me the wizard is a little further than I thought from Valakai because it's north of Lake Zarevich. It yeah. looks like the Dragon House is probably closer if we want if we want to stop somewhere on the way. I mean, the dragon house isn't as close as it looks because presumably we can't travel through those woods. Yeah. Or maybe we uh, can. Point. Okay, should we then just go beeline to Valakai and come back and then go? Yeah, that's places? what I was thinking. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, we should go to Valakai. All right, straight. Maybe we can boat across the lake. Maybe <laughs> that's a terrible idea. Could be. <laughs> Resident Evil vibes from that lake. <laughs> Death is always an option. Okay, so the journey from Crest to Valakai on foot. I'm going up as in Petra, obviously. Do me a favor. The abbot promised to bring us back if we fall once in battle. If that were to happen, please do not take me to that man. I that think man. that's fairly universally agreed. Okay, as long as we're on the same page. The shadow has brought me back once before. It was not pleasant. I do not wish to become whatever thing he wishes to make of us. If we die, we die with honor. Indeed, burn the body. Burn my body, <laughs> I die. Oh, I, 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 I mean, you know, engulf me in gold and put me in, you know, in the center <laughs> of a town or something. Uh... <laughs> I mean, that's up to you. I mean, I wouldn't mind being brought back for whatever reason. 
Okay. I mean, I think in this land you get mud, fire, or nothing. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you're not wrong, but still. Yeah, Elephant Man, unfortunately, the gold plating may be a little much. I'm still, like, standing still, like, as if I'm posing. In the, in the pose. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. We'll settle for a stone statue or perhaps wood. Yeah, that, there's not much. Well, you know, I've never heard of anyone being gold plated for death, but, you know. Good luck to you if you want that. I mean, that sounds like it would work for about five minutes. <laughs> It just yeah, then your bones would probably crush. Let's be real. <laughs> Gold is pretty heavy. Plaza. Where to? Uh, so yeah, are we just on the road then? Um. So, did you all pick up as in Petra, return to the inn where they're at? Yeah, I think we said we agreed that they should come with us. They'll help us find the wedding dress. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. So when you return to the inn to gather up your belongings and gathering gather up as in Petra, um, they would be downstairs already. They would inform you that, um, essentially, as would say that that drunkard came down in the morning, left without saying a word. Petra would then kind of respond to something along the lines of, there's nothing for us to say to one another. Not anymore. Oh, boy. Um, the Burgomaster's going to be a problem. <laughs> yeah. The drinking makes him unhinged, and he's going to... Oh, no, the, uh, the drunkard would have been Ismark. Oh, Ismark, that's right. Not the Burgomaster. He's, yeah, he... It's going to be a problem. But for now, yeah. If you have nothing to say each up to each other, then so be it. We've no need for him anyways. Petra kind of nods. And... So did you find anything out useful up there? Well, we have to go to Valakai as, um... We need to get the wedding dress for the abbot, but... Huh? We are doing a task for the abbot in good faith. In hopes of getting more information don't have to be a what? seer to see that that's going to be a interesting trip. We've been making so many friends. Oh, yeah, we so should die. Probability that any of us is going to die is fairly high. That, unfortunately, does seem true. As we kind of roll our eyes, and she says, she's been like this since last night. All doom and gloom. She says, we're going to be fine. Don't worry, Petra. I'll watch after you. All of us will watch after one another. Everything is going to be fine. We'll find a way out of here. Petra doesn't say anything back. But we won't give the Reaper a good fight. <laughs> As gives you a nod. Damn right we will. I mean, we'll see what happens when we get to the fight. I mean, hopefully, you know, we'll all make it out to this, but you never know. We will. I know it. All of us will leave this place together. One way or the other. Indeed. Indeed. And I'm just going to look at Sam's sheet where he's already used his daily inspiration. <laughs> <laughs> meta the, the only one is used this is man crazy. is meta gaming <laughs> <laughs> we'll all survive <laughs> I support the decision <laughs> alright we still have a horse and a cart or did those get taken one more time did the horse and the cart get taken? Oh yeah, they they okay. left with the mark with the Mardikovs. We should have hid those. <laughs> <laughs> you're, yeah. you're, you know, gonna take the last of the wine, leave them on their own, and then steal their cart. Fuck them all the <laughs> way. <laughs> Before we leave, though, uh, hmm. can I go buy an additional water skin from like a general store or something? Uh, yeah. 
So, oddly enough, there is not really a general store here. It's mostly just uh, the Burgomaster trading and... Um, I, I feel like the word would be like facilitating trade, but yeah, you can get a you can get a water skin here. Okay, how much is a water skin? Uh it'll be standard PHP prices. So let me check. Water skin. Two silver. Easy. Okay, and I'd like to go back up to the lake and fill it up. Okay, yeah. To the uh, little pool. Yep. Where the ghost came out of? <laughs> uh, the holy water pool. There was the... Uh... Oh, that's right. That's yeah, right. yeah. But I thought we saw an image of the of a or a reflection of the face of Petra or something. Or you did. Yeah, it's holy water. Don't work if you don't see nothing. True. <laughs> yeah, good point. Uh, I was starting to make the and do extra work, but how about how many vials would you say that's equivalent to? A water skin. Yeah. I would say six. Actually, cursed to me, I didn't have a water skin in the first place. Or rations. Do we need, like, rations and food and stuff? That's really up to you all. Um, I don't track that kind of stuff here. And with Sam being able to produce good berries... Um, I suppose that's true. Yeah. Yeah, so... Yeah, travel tracking, ration tracking, water tracking isn't something we'll be doing. I usually only do... Session, you just assumed it was, like, part of the camping part where we right. just do all the food stuff right 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 yeah i generally only do like ration tracking water tracking all that kind of stuff on adventures where it's actually like a real big focus of it like out of the abyss out of the <laughs> abyss yeah out yeah. of the abyss tomb of annihilation um speaking of which i've watched the first 30 minutes of your video vase it's been super helpful <laughs> oh cool cool i'm glad it has yeah been. it was definitely it was very so, it's such a fun campaign yeah I'm looking we had a really it. good time with it looking forward to it I'm over encumbrance. Do I need to worry about that? You're over encumbered. Interesting. Um, generally, I say that uh, uh, it's only come up like once or twice. So generally, I say like, what's causing you to be over encumbered? Like, are you carrying like forty long swords on you or something? Oh, I know. It's it's a chest that's part of my background. The what? I probably don't need to lug around an actual empty trunk, do I? <laughs> Yeah, where's all that weight coming from? So your geez, scale mill is 45 pounds, the chest is 25, okay? I mean, scale mill is, is heavy as hell. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to have to ditch this chest. When did you get a chest? It's, it's apparently part of my background equipment. A 25-pound chest that you lug around? <laughs> wow. Yeah. Wait, what? What background is that? So we've been hanging out with a kobold with a giant chest on him? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's part of one of the tool kits. Apparently I've been over encumbered for a little bit, actually. Weird. <laughs> what? All the time you've just been lagging behind. This artificer should have used his little battlesmith buddy for the chest. Like, come on, man. I do have... <laughs> yeah, you do have a steel defender. A so, giant yeah. fucking golem. Yeah, just go ahead. Just go ahead and don't worry about over encumbrance at all. Like, usually, the only time I ever actually enforce that is when I have like loot goblins that want to take like, oh, that ten foot mirror. I'm gonna drag that fucker with me. It's like, okay, you're over encumbered. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like like use common sense type of <laughs> right. Or like uh, in my Avernus campaign, I went I went and I looked at somebody's sheet, and this per this guy had been picking up every single weapon that they'd come across. And they had hit an armory at one point. 
So what? He had like he had like fifteen daggers and like eight long swords and four battle hammers. I'm like, dude, no. <laughs> yeah, that's that's too much. <laughs> okay, but if it's like a rogue that like specializes in throwing daggers, I well, I guess not even right. a long sword. The fifteen but, like, daggers. <laughs> the fifteen daggers. I, I feel like ten. Once you get past ten daggers on your yeah. person, you run a lot of like safety hazards. Like. Yeah, like, are you going to go to bed at night and you're going to have, like, 15 daggers, like, you know, just right. surrounding you? Take like... a tumble down the hill, take, like, 40 <laughs> D6 piercing damage. Oh my god. Alright, everybody, so is there anything else that you all would like to do in Valak, I'm sorry, in Kresg before you leave the gates shutting behind you and locking as they do? Yes, I would like to go to Valakai, please, so I can do something. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so with you all leaving Kresk, the town gates shutting behind you, the Burgomaster watching you solemnly leave, we will go ahead and take our break, and when we come back, the road to Valakai. All right. All right. All right, everybody, so welcome back. Um leaving the village of Kresk behind you all, the gates closing behind you, making your way out onto the Old Spalich Road, and eastward towards Valakai. So, let's go ahead and put you on that. Nice place. Man, what a lovely road. Yeah, it's pretty, right? All right, everybody. So let's go ahead and get that first D20 roll for travel between here and Valakai. All right, who wants to go first? I will roll. And what a roll. Yeah. All right, everyone. So, your first couple of hours on the road goes by relatively uneventfully. Still get that continual feeling of being watched, much as you have since you've been traveling in this place. But several hours go by. The sun begins to sink lower, although you never truly see the sun. The ev only evidence being the fact that it is getting ever slightly darker as the day progresses, the mist and fog seeming to lose some of its light. And about maybe three, four hours after you've all been making your way through these woods, following the signposts, crossing the bridges where necessary to get to Valakai. You pass over a place that is marked as the Luna River Crossroads. Crossroads look much like the other ones that you saw. The road coming to an X intersection. Sorry, I'll move your tokens. You would have made it all the way to there. Yeah. Are we meant to be able to see the map? Sorry, no, I, I realize that you all can't see what I can see. Um, but you have made it considerably far, going over one crossroads and then making it to another before you got to here. Now, off in the distance ahead, you can see the Lunar River crossroads and where the road comes to an X intersection there. Branches to the northwest, northeast, southwest, and southeast. Lower half of a snapped wooden signpost thrust upwards at an angle near the eastern elbow of the intersection. Top half of the site, featuring arms pointing in four directions, lies in the weeds nearby. If anyone was to approach that broken off sign, you would see Kresg, Solenka Pass, Lake Baratok, Valakai, and Ravenloft. And then another one, a worn out sign that says Berez pointing to the southeast. It seems like somebody's broken off this signpost 
and discarded it on the other side of the river. So, yeah. What? This place, this domain, I mean, it doesn't seem like Strahd cares much for infrastructure. Was this place part of the material plane once? Petra would say that she can vaguely remember stories of people, the old, old people of this place, talking of a time when the place, when Barovia wasn't shrouded in mist, when it was a beautiful valley. She doesn't know too many details, but she does get the impression that this place might have once been part of the rear part of the prime material. What are we going to say to the Burgermeister to get his wife's wedding dress? Um, you know, now that you mentioned it, that's a very good question. Um, I don't quite know what to say. I'm maybe we should. We just... could just steal it. <laughs> Wasn't think... going to suggest that, but <laughs> does it look like I'm gonna be stealing a wedding dress? Like we don't even know where she keeps it. First of all, oh, we can. Uh, we could just be like, oh, you you look uh, rather beautiful. You must uh, look the same as you did on your wedding day. Speaking of which. And then, you know, we just have her bring it out. You, do you hear yourself and how awkward that statement is? <laughs> like, you know how beautiful you are, then, you know, all of a sudden, oh, you know, I want the wedding dress, you know? Trust Walk me, up work to work before. <laughs> work before. <laughs> are you sure it's worked before, you know, where you're from? I may have been drunk. Knock on a man's door. Hello, sir. May we see your wife's wedding dress? <laughs> wedding dress inspectors, yeah. <laughs> I mean, unless, you know, you know, I can kind of talk about, you know, me getting a wedding of some sort, you know. I mean, trying to, at least, but... <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> So as you're all having this conversation, crossing the bridge at the Luna River Crossroads, you the road begins to slope downwards as if you're going down a decline towards Valakai, obviously heading into a valley. Judging by the maps that you have and the information given to you by Kreskov and the Abbot, you're maybe about three quarters of a mile outside of Valakai at the moment. And this decline, this drop into the valley, seems to have created a pool of standing water that breaks across the road. Um, you can all see the road dips down and then kind of goes back up, and at the base of this hill is a small little pond that seems to have formed. You're all standing at the top of a hill right now looking down at this pond in the middle of the road. Um, just the road is flooded, but there are three corpses bobbing up and down in the water. Very clearly... That's what I was waiting for. Very clearly dead. Um, appear to be a trio of, of adventurers. Arms and armor strapped to their bodies. Other th such things still left behind. Doesn't appear that they were robbed, but something dark has clearly befallen them. Is there enough light to determine the color of the water? Uh, yeah, it's still it's still late afternoon at this point, so it's I mean it's dark, but not like abnormally so. The water is. 
Do octopus have dark vision? Let's uh, find out together. <laughs> they do not. Alright. Never mind. I mean, better to know now instead of, you know, when you transform into one. <laughs> you can't see anything. <laughs> Come across three dead adventurers. Do octopuses have dark vision? <laughs> The very important questions of Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, well, okay, all right, uh, weapons out. They're, they're floating under the bridge, you said? Uh, no, they're on the other side of the bridge, and once you got to the other side of the bridge, once you've crossed it successfully, then you would begin an in, a decline downwards um, into the valley here. And at the base of that decline, it appears that a that water from somewhere has flooded into the road and covered it in a small pool of water about, about 35 feet wide and about 20 feet across. Mm -hmm. um, and it's impossible to tell the depth until you approach. Do you have uh... Scope it out as an octopus, just kind of like you know, pick, pick my head out occasionally. I was gonna say like you know maybe I can do like a quick perception check to see if I recognize the bodies. Sure, maybe. Yeah, go ahead. It's us. Huh. It's us. So, with a fifteen, um, they are floating face down. It's impossible to see their faces from where you're standing. Um, okay, but. They don't seem familiar. Their arms and armor don't seem familiar. It looks like a it looks like a soldier of some kind wearing half plate, a long sword strapped to his belt, um, still in its sheath from the looks of it. The other one appears to be an archer of some kind, and the last one is wearing wizardly robes. Okay, I would um, relay that to the rest of the party, just sort of like what I'm seeing. Does this general image, and I'm reaching, by the way, does this general image remind me of the MO of any creatures I'm familiar with? Let me just make a history, survival, or arcana check. Um, oozes are known to hang out in puddles of water like this, crossing roads. Um, aside from that, not really. Not in, like, small little... Puddles like this is essentially what it is. It's just a big puddle. Let me go ahead and give you all a better idea of what you're looking at here. Oh, map. Map. Yeah, You'll probably be a little bit farther back unless anyone's actually approached. So you'd all probably be right about here. I clamber up on top of my tiny steel defender. Oh, God. Let me go ahead and change that right now. The tiniest of steel defenders. Right. <laughs> I'm about it, but every time I put him on the map, he's so tiny. He's so little, yeah. Okay, I'm changing it right now. Uh, okay, it's done. Thank you. Only one way forward, unless we want to hike through the misty woods. Yeah. <clears throat> you seem like seasoned adventurers. Something killed them. We must be careful. Here, let me try this. <laughs> Can I just shoot a crossbow bolt at one of them? Of course, yeah. But make a uh, ranged attack at disadvantage. You strike one of the corpses. Does not move. Does not so much as twitch. Just you get a wet thud. That's it. Uh, oh, which one of the corpses did you shoot at? The wizard, the archer, or the soldier? 
I guess I would have just picked whichever one is closest. Okay. We'll call that one the soldier. I could have go out and bring us one of the bodies, if that makes you feel better. I have um, a friend who can do that. I'll send my unseen servant. Okay. And what exactly are you having them do? Drag one of the bodies towards you? Yeah. The one that was shot? Uh, yes. Okay. Then... Sam, can you see what might have killed this person? Mm, sure, I'll take a look. Okay. Go and make a medicine check, Sam. Uh, yep. So you don't see any obvious wounds right away, Sam. But as you begin looking a little closer, moving some things aside, you see that there are no wounds. Oh no. And Sam, as you're going over the body, Aurelia, you please make a perception check. Oh god, alright. Uh, no pressure, right? Alright. Aurelia, you get the distinct impression that you're being watched. This guy's clean. No wounds. Um, guys, um, I have a bad feeling about this. Mm hmm. I, well, I. If you have a bad uh, feeling, then we should move quickly. But we cannot leave the dead to just lie floating. We must burn the bodies. We'll see. I... Is looking back down the trail from whence you came. And she looks, she leans over to you, Aurelia, and says, Um, is that a friend of yours? Back down what? the trail from the direction that you all came, there is a figure standing in the roadway. Perfectly still, unmoving, in the middle of the road at the top of that hill, staring back down at you all. Get ready for a fight. Uranus, as you say that, Sam, the body that you've been inspecting, its eyes open. And they are alive. white and dead. The rotting fist what? reaches up to try and grab a hold of you. And Veronis, why don't you go and roll damage on that crossbow you shot this fucker with? Okay, oh. then. This... I mean, it's it's a crit. <laughs> that was with disadvantage, though. Oh, right? that's true. Yeah. Yeah. So you hit. So okay. five. Okay. And with that, as you all look back towards the figure that is watching you from the roadway, you focus, and the eyes flash with this red. It almost seems bright in the dim darkness of this fog in the late afternoon, but the eyes flash, and. The jaw drops just a bit, and you get the gleam of bright white teeth. And we are going to roll initiative. Oh, fuck me, man. Never do anything nice. <laughs> fuck me, not now, no. <laughs> not the undead. Yeah, man. man, why did it have to be a 20? Uh... Uh, does somebody want to roll for Petra's portents? I'll do <clears throat> the uh, portents for Petra. Okay. Is the thing up? I can't see. Uh, uh, it's kind of there it is. 
There it is. 10 and 14? Yeah. Okay. Nine. 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 <laughs> that reminds me, we don't have a group name yet. <laughs> oh, jeez. How many sessions has it been? Like This is five? nine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, look we at that. Don't have nine. <laughs> Mardikov's Bane. Mardikov's oh, Bane. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's not. We're too. <laughs> what do you guys do? It's in the name. <laughs> Mine didn't show up. I rolled a 15. Okay. Go ahead and re-roll, and we'll change you. 15, you said? Yeah. Ah, oh, my auto-initiative sorter is off. Boo! <laughs> oh, no. Oh, weird. Oh, there it goes. He has to go in the menu and do I have himself. to actually press buttons. <laughs> no! No! That's not worked! Select in descending order, though. No. <laughs> I know, right? So difficult. <laughs> The whole like eight milliseconds I won't get back, damn it. Go <laughs> Okay. And so fittingly enough, the first creature to act is the zomboy that Sam has been poking at. Minus five hit points, of course. But from its prone position, it does rise up and approach you, Sam. The soldier's He's body. Alive raises up an arm and swings it at you to slam at you, Sam, but it is only a 10 to hit. That'll miss. Okay. Now, the creature on the back of the road behind you all, red glowing eyes, is going to let out this inhuman hissing sound and charge towards Aurelia and Ez. It is going to claw once towards each of you. This one is for Aurelia. It is only a 10 to hit you, Aurelia. That's a miss. The next one is going for Ez. That is a nat one. Bad luck to start. Good stuff. Okay. It's gonna bring us to Bolivar. Aurelia, it looks like you're right. missing five hit points. Yeah, that okay. was from the... Uh... Abbott. Okay, place. got it. Uh, you would have had a chance to take a short rest between now and then. Uh, I would not have spent the hit dice. Fantastic. Okay, good stuff. Alright. I'm gonna use my free casting of Inflict Wounds from Shadow Touched and try and cast it on this zombie thing that's in front of us. Okay. Hopefully this works. Saving throw results. Oh no, melee, 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 melee spell attack. Yeah, yep, yep, yep. Melee spell. yeah, it's weird. It's not letting me roll it, so I'm gonna have to just manually type it. Oh uh, yeah, I think you. Uh, there was a problem when we leveled up where you couldn't add in the uh, spells for whatever reason. So. Uh, so that's a twenty-four to hit. I'm just checking something real quick here, Bolivar. Okay, so if you use your token actions, um, when you click on your token, you get check, yeah. chill, touch, and knit. If you hit the spells, mm -hmm. and you get the drop-down list right there, you yeah. can oh, cast okay. directly from there, and it does all the things right for from you. There. Okay, cool. Good to know. Thank you. Okay, but we'll use that um, 24. Okay, so um, he's going to take um, 20 points. Uh, I believe it's necrotic. He crumples down to the ground and begins convulsing and spasming. So. Away from me, creature. Back to the shadow. I'm gonna he cannot, move, he cannot succeed. 20 is too much. He dies. I'm going to move away. Okay. And then I'm going to have uh, Titere move over here and use the help action for Aurelia's attacks. Or, I'm yeah. sorry, is that Aurelia? Yeah, that is Aurelia. Yep. Yeah. Then that's my turn. Hey. Okay. 
There All we right. go. It's a little better. Okay. So, Aurelia, you are up. Um, with the help action, I'm gonna see if I can stab the thing with my rapier. Okay. Oh, I need to get Ez and Petra in there. My bad. One sec. I see that help action came in really handy there. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> That clutch 18. <laughs> that is certainly a hit. All right. For a six piercing. Okay. The rapier pierces into this creature, but she does not seem overly phased by it, Aurelia. Your yeah. rapier only does three points of piercing to it. Uh, I am going to end my turn on that, though. Okay. Boulevard just went. That is going to... What is going on? Weirdness. That is going to bring us to Veronis. And I'm going to drop um, Ez and Petra down to 8. They'll both share 8 for their initiatives, since we skipped them by accident. So for my action, I'd like to see if I can uh, examine this creature closely and try to determine what it is. Which one? Oh, the, um, the one next to Aurelia. Okay, absolutely. Um, Veronis, with your knowledge on the subject, it is clearly a vampire. It is a fucking oh, vampire. Oh my god. Yeah. It's a vampire. Alright, so for my, uh, bonus action, I'm going to order the Steel Defender to try and grapple it. Oh. Am I still defender? Have sessional inspiration? Uh, you can give your inspiration to him if you would like. Yeah, we're going to do that. Okay. Get away from it. I don't know. Let's make it a compelling argument. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Veronis, uh, you want to roll damage for your crit? It's a grapple. It's a grapple. Oh, rip. You have it. Yeah. <laughs> um, so for future reference, sorry, I should have mentioned this when you first mentioned grapple, but um, I always do grapples as a contested athletics check. So it uses one of your attacks. So if you have multi-attack, um, you can use one of them to grapple, but it's an athletics check instead of an attack roll. This is just the steel defender's action. Okay. Doesn't have multi attack. You, oh my god, I am sorry. My brain is not working. That is exactly what you did. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> brain, work! Yes, please! Oh. It's like, you know that thing you just did? You should have done that instead of what you did. <laughs> so. <laughs> All right. So, Veronis, you do have. The Steel Defender does have the vampire grappled. I'm. Oh, come on, map. I'll circle up to there. Okay. And that'll be my turn. Got it. One of the zombies begins its slow, monotonous approach out of the shallow water and towards you all. Sam. Um, is it really dark or is it really foggy? It's foggy. Very foggy. She. Um, well, uh, no, that's a bad idea. I was about to start. All right, uh, I'm gonna just do something simple here. I'll go over here. She can't see anything. Uh, you know what? Sorry, I didn't realize that it was full dark on this map. Aurelia would be able to see better than she can, so let me go ahead and do this. Yeah, I can only see like. Five feet. Yeah, I don't have dark vision still, so. Okay. So you can. It is. It is. It is not dark. It is only oh, okay. late afternoon and foggy. So it's dim light and better right now. <clears throat> okay. Oh, never mind. I went too close. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna go back here. Um. 
and I'm gonna cast Bless. <clears throat> uh, sorry, this is new spiel. Okay, uh, cast bless on uh, Aurelia, uh, Varanus, and Ez. And Bolivar. Ez? Ez, yeah, Ez. Yeah, Ez. Okay. Probably. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, so bless is up. So you just see Sam kind of hyping himself up because he has no god because that he is all that he needs. <laughs> um, let's post that real quick. Okay. And I think that's it for now. Okay. Yeah, that's all I can really do here. That is going to bring us to Petra. Okay, Sorry, who's all blessed? Sorry? Is it who's all blessed? Sorry. Oh, um, as myself. You, Aurelia, and Ez. Oh, okay. So, Petra is, her eyes wide, terror obviously gripping her. She is going to approach, she's going to approach, Sam, do you, do you normally get up in melee combat with these things? Hmm, like. Well, I mean, from from Petra's experience, have... from what she's seen of you fighting. Oh, uh, she didn't see the flame sword, so no, she hasn't seen me get okay. up and up and close. So she would cast protection from good and evil on as. We just all buff up as like, <laughs> alien buffs. Petra is now concentrating on that. And she is going to back up with you, Bolvar. And Ez, now empowered by Sam and Petra, is going to be like... She is essentially going to smile and she says, Finally, a good fight. I've been waiting for this and she's going to go in. It... And 14 just misses, unfortunately. <clears throat> uh, she bless. has bless. Oh, 15 hits. Anything above 14 hits. Fantastic. So, for 7 points. Ez would shout back. And she would say, Stay back, Petra. I've got this. And she stays there and ready. Leads us to the other zombie in the lake also begins a slow, monotonous approach towards the party. That zombie is dead. Brings us back around to the vampire spawn, who hisses right into Ez's face and is going to once more share the strikes, but this time it is a claw for Ez. This one does hit. And... It then lunges at you, Aurelia, trying to bite you. Aurelia, that is a 12 to hit. That misses. Okay. Yep. Okay. Aurelia, you're up. Alright, I am gonna be using a new spell. Um, I am gonna cast Shatter on the uh, two zombies that are approaching. Fantastic. Um. What's up, Ace? Oh no, I was gonna tell Aurelia that 
Petra and I can take care of them while you guys handle the vampire, but uh, that's fine. I don't want to say no to <laughs> extra damage I mean, to them. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's only eight, I mean, but it is what it is. Yeah, 13 for eight. Okay. Uh, half as much on a save too, by the way. Okay, thank you. Uh, one fail, one success. Uh, I'm going to give Bardic Inspiration to Bolivar, and I'm going to end my turn. Hey, Bolivar, you're up. All right, I'm going to say, Petra, stay behind me. Move up, and I will uh, make puppet strings come out of the ground it's... and entangle these guys. So I'll oh, cast awesome. web. That's cool. So web it is, and... Oh, I don't have to roll attack. They have to roll saving throw at the beginning of their turn, I believe. So, uh, 20 foot cube, and I'll make it so it's the border of it is right in front of where I am. Okay. So, uh, I think I can draw, right? Draw shape, circle, 20 foot radius of 40 feet. Oops. Oh, you got it. Okay. So, where'd you uh, want it? 20 foot cube, yeah. So, um, right, right here in front of me. Yeah, there you go. Like right here? Low, one, yeah, right there. Perfect. Fantastic. Yeah. And I think they save at the beginning of their turn. Okay. Uranus. I'm going to aim for its heart. Is your repeating shot crossbow considered a magic weapon, Artificer? It is, and I didn't roll bless. That was my mistake. Or, no, wait, no, never mind. That's... Yeah, D24. Fourteen's <laughs> <laughs> too low to hit. Okay, 14 does not hit, unfortunately. Okay, got it, Bovar. All right, Vronis, anything else after the shot? What's Carlotta going to do? Carlotta is going to... It can't really knock her prone if she's already grappled. Does, that doesn't really work. Uh, you can knock her prone if she's grappled. Oh, not if you're not... If, if, if So since uh, your still defender is the one doing the grappling, it can use another athletics check to knock her prone. Okay, he's going to... Still defender is going to try to fall over and body press her. All right, athletics check, please. 16, not bad. Against the vampires, 20, unfortunately. Fuck. All right. It's my turn. Okay. So it now has to make a strength save against the web, correct? That's correct, yep. Strength save so the, result uh, is only... It's a dex, dex oh, dex, save. okay. Um, yeah. Dexterity saving throw. Dex saving throw result is only a seven. It is restrained. Cool. Um, they can use their action to then make a strength check against my DC, which is fourteen. Okay. To try and get out, but it'll use their action. Okay. It is going to do that. Gets a five. Cool. It's still restrained by the puppet strings. Hey, okay. Sam, you're up. Um, bonus action, I'm going to use um, Healing Word on Ez. Okay. Uh, let's click this. Nice. So Ez gets 7 plus... Oh, but that's going to fully heal. Yeah, gonna it's going to get her up to full. 7 plus 3 would be 10, so... <clears throat> she looks back and just uh, gives you a smile and... Thanks, appreciate it. It isn't over yet! And halfway as I'm saying that, I'm on a wild shape. Nice. Uh, so I'm going to wild shape into a velociraptor. What? Do I, do I have a velociraptor for you yet in your wild shapes? Yes. Awesome. Are they small? Oh, he little. He little guy. He's just a little guy. <laughs> oh my god, I am tiny. It's a tiny it's a beast. beast. Oh, it's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, <laughs> so, so say I'm expected to go big, go smaller. <laughs> All right, let me make sure I still I got vision on him and everything. Not yeah, these were bigger. <laughs> oh, 
Or did he, was he imagining trying to turn into a T-Rex and this is what he got instead? All right, and Ty, you have, yep, yeah, you do. Awesome. All right, gonna, it's all yours. I'm going to flank here. Yep, I'm going to flank here and then okay. end my turn. That is going to bring us to Petra, who is going to look around and seeing the zombies slow down, she's going to look back towards the vampire and she is going to mind spike it. Wisdom save result from the ah, oh, I get a fucking twenty on its wisdom save. Boo. Okay. Mind spike. So half damage. So it still takes five damage from that. Petra's turn brings us around to Ez who looks down towards Sam Velociraptor and gives you a quick nod thanks for the flanking and starts attacking Seventeen hits, a thirteen does not for two piercing. Uh, bless, bless so plus. A... I keep forgetting. So. Yeah, bless plus a sneak. Fourteen does not hit. And thank you for reminding yeah, me about Ez's sneak attack. I believe her sneak is at two d six. Damn. So another eight. So that brings it up to a total of twelve damage. It gets half down to six. Oh, shoot. Deck save. Yep. Does get an eight. Fails. All right. It's tangled up by the puppet strings. Strength save result is a ten. No good. Cool. All right. Brings us back around to the vampire who hissing and snarling at the both of you wordlessly challenging the both all everyone that's surrounding her she begins to attack and i believe it will be claws at aurelia aurelia it says nat one for a miss and then a bite towards ez with a 12 to miss aurelia you're up remember you have the help action i do um all right, I'm gonna cast Dissident Whispers so that I get the reaction uh, attack. Okay, DC 13. Wisdom. She does get a 22. Vampire is on the wisdom saves today, so half damage and she does not run. All right, I guess I'm going to have to stay there and end my turn. Boulevard. Back to the shadows, creature. I will, um, I will summon the shadows to inflict wounds on this vampire through Titere. I'm going to cast the touch spell through my familiar. Nice. Uh, using its reaction, so we're going to make an attack roll. And so I can just click on it. So let's make that work. Level one. 16 hits. Sweet. Uh, 15 necrotic damage. Nice. Probably resistant. Yeah, bit, it but... probably is. Double checking. <laughs> um, yep, indeed resistant to necrotic, so only seven. Okay, good enough. Petra, um, I'm going to tell Petra, move in closer to the rest of the group. Uh, and then I will uh, end my turn, and then Titere will use its action to help. Um, this time will help uh, as she gets that sneak attack. All right, Man. and that'll be my turn. Uranus. It's... Just 
take a step there and uh, take another shot. Uh, sharpshooter, bless all nine yards. Okay. Oh no. I'll give my session of the Baronis. Huh? I'm giving my session over. It's session on inspiration. Should you do that? Yeah. No, no, no. I'm saying. I'm just saying. I'm just trying to understand why minus four. Uh, uh, that's because that's I think I rolled a one on bless yeah okay. so minus five for sharpshooter plus one for bless there we go oh, yeah that was my confusion sorry hey so 19 Damn. points alright and uh, this time it's set to still defend with the uh, kind of bear hugging her it's just gonna kind of squeeze for Force damage. Okay. 22 hits. Oh. Make it do the damage roll? Um, uh, yeah, just click attack. Yep. Oh, there we go. Sean, does it look like its wounds are, like, closing when we hit it? It does. Shit. Okay. Anything else from Veronis? Uh, nope. Strength save or strength athletics check. Yeah, because it's already restrained, so yeah, it would just. It does it. get a 16 on that. All right, it is freed. But it's difficult terrain. Okay. Zombie slow moving only gets 10 feet. <laughs> nice. All right, Sam. <clears throat> Okay, I'm gonna just jump on this thing. Nice. Start biting. 14 to hit. Okay. Something that misses. 14 does not hit, unfortunately. Alright, then I'm gonna just start ripping. 19 to hit. 16's good. 19 hits, yeah. 3 slashing. Okay. <clears throat> and that's all what Lost Raptor Sam can do. Okay. Brings us around to Petra, who is going to heed Bolivar's warning and close in with the rest of the group. Ah, uh, I'm pressing the wrong one. And then it is going to be a chill touch at one of the captured zombies. I'm sorry, a ray of frost. And a miss. Oh no, zombie! Eight hits a zombie. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot there. Uh, yeah, zombies AC are like super low. <laughs> All right. And that does bring us to Ez, who seems in her element right now, fighting the forces of undead. She is on the verge of a smile, even as she attacks, kind of dancing around her opponent, and strikes out at the vampire with advantage. Eighteen, and unfortunately, and a fourteen, but the fourteen gets the bless. Gets it up to seventeen, which does hit, and for sneak. Another four. So that is a grand total of 11, 19 points, halved down to nine points. All right. And she is going to use her bonus action to disengage and hop up there next to Veronis. She kind of kneels over a little bit, catching her breath, breathing heavy. It's like, it's going well, right? Going well. The hard part hasn't come yet. She looks a little worried and starts looking around. I think there's more. Vampires don't kill just because you stab them. She nods knowingly. Athletics check from this zombie result is a 15. All right, it is freed. Okay. us around to the vampire who's seeing as escape is going to turn and snarl at her but then begins swinging at those that are surrounding her it is going to be a claw attack for i think it is the velociraptor only eight to hit though 
that on this. And then a bite attack. No, another slash attack, another claw attack towards the steel defender. That is a 25. Oh, so the steel nine, defender beat up that hits. Yeah, nine slashing to the steel defender. Really? All right. Um. Mm, yeah, I'm gonna stab at the uh, vampire because I don't think I would know about the zombie. So. Seventeen hits. Ten piercing, halved down to five. Sorry, I have not been. I have. I have not been narrating it, but. It is important to note that these zombies' wounds have been closing as you've been slashing and slicing at it. It is certainly taking damage, but it is healing on every one of its turns. Zombies or the vampire? The vampire. Um, yeah, I'm going to end my turn. Okay. Bolivar. All right. Uh, I'm going to say the thing is healing. Let me see if I can do something, and I will chill touch, okay. because that will prevent regeneration. Nice. And that's a 17 hit. 17 hits? For two necrotic, but then for... it can't regenerate. Yep, turn. one necrotic, but it can't regenerate anymore. <laughs> yep, <laughs> and then I'm going to step forward and say, Petra, keep moving back. I'll hold them off if they're not restrained. And that's my turn. Uh, help action, Itere, for this, in this turn, Aurelia. Uh, Bolivar, can you make a insight check, please, as you speak to Petra? Sure. Petra looks very frightened. Um, she's looking around, and you just see her eyes widening as she shoots around. She didn't. She barely even seemed to hear what she said, and you hear her kind of muttering to herself under her breath. No, no. Can't. No. This is. This isn't right. This isn't right. Varanus. I'm going to scream to Varanus. Help Petra. Something's wrong. And that's that's my turn. Varanus, you're up. I don't know what that means. Varanus, um, once Bolivar says that, you would see Petra kind of looking around wildly like she's searching for something. question um, what I'm going to do I think is because uh, Ronis's solution is just going to be to first of all kill the vampire before we deal with other problems Seems I'm going like to a run up solid strategy for a vampire hunter right <laughs> I'm going to take a, a vial of holy water that I have uh, that was in addition to the water skin. I'm going to uncork it and throw it in its face. As soon as you uncork it, the vampire turns towards you and screams in your face. Not even that hiss anymore. Just like almost human, but distinctly not. Just howls in your face and the water splashes across her and she shrieks. Does it do damage, or...? Um, it prevents her from healing. You can see it sizzling on her. It doesn't seem to be causing any damage beyond superficial damage, but you certainly can tell it's having an effect. Okay. Uh, well, that having been done, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. gonna... It looks like holy water does do damage. Let me go ahead and double-check that real quick. Wow, okay. That's actually hefty. Roll 2d6. Okay. The burns. The burns cut deep. She takes 7 radiant damage. Yeah, and I'm gonna have a 
if I were to give it the squeeze. All of my character sheets are broken. Oh no. The holy water did oh. it. <laughs> like, like, like a pissed off juicer. Okay, so how does the steel defender kill that thing? Uh, it's just gonna, so it's got it up in a bear hug, and as the vampire's burning, it's just gonna squeeze, squeeze until it hears a pop. All right, so the vampire arms at its side, hissing and spitting and growling at the steel defender as it squeezes and squeezes. You can hear the cries beginning to turn more panic until you all hear a pop, and it just stops moving, goes stiff. Honesty, let it go. Uh, no, uh, no, not yet. The steel defender is going to keep holding it. Okay, it does. It does die from that. Uh, but that will be my turn. Fantastic. So, as you do that, as is just like, yes, good job, everyone. We did it. Took that thing out. Wonderful. Fantastic. And she says, now we've just got to take care of the... Ugh! And you hear her cut short in the middle of her speaking. And turning towards her, you can all see a shadowed figure standing directly behind her. Petra's oh. eyes have gone wide and she is just shaking her head. No. No. This isn't happening. This isn't happening. And, Pet and Petra kind of puts her hands over her eyes. And you see the figure standing directly behind Petra. It kind of moves out from behind her. And you all see a pale face. Jet black hair combed slick back. Taller than he seems like he should be. He lifts Ez up off the ground, holding her in front of him. Head kind of coming out around, so around her shoulders. Says, that was a commendable performance, everyone. Very well done. I cannot remember the last time anyone has felled one of my creations so efficiently, so quickly. Well done, well done indeed. I'm so sorry. Allow me to make a proper introduction. My name is Strahd von Zarevich. I would like to properly welcome you all to my home. And well, your home, as it were. He looks around towards Petra, who is intentionally trying like hell to avoid his gaze. Welcome home, Tatiana. You cut our last visit so short, I was worried I'd not see you again. But the mists... The mists will always bring you back to me, won't they? Ez begins to struggle. You see her hand going towards her waist as she tries to pull a dagger out. You all hear a little bit of, like, tendons creaking as you can see Strahd's, uh, Strahd's grip tightening around her neck. She cries out a little bit. Strahd holds her out in front of him. Is now, now, none of that. He raises his hand and just kind of makes a gesture in front of her face. He says, shh, and Ez falls unconscious. I've got plans for you, don't you worry. He casually, effortlessly begins to lower Ez's body and reaches it behind him. And you can see... Pairs of red glowing eyes beginning to appear from the darkness behind him, seeming to appear out of the mist, out of the fog that surrounds him from behind. There is no less than a dozen sets of eyes behind him. And you see Ez's body lifted away and passed back among these figures standing behind Strahd. As several, a dozen or more vampires spawn, take Ez's body and begin passing it back along the line. Stop. I'll kill her. 
he said he holds up his hand and says now now thank you all i should be thanking you for returning my dearest safely home your service has been commendable and for that i will spare you for now see i've been watching as you move through my lands and i am impressed the way you handled the martikovs your dealing with the abbot all oh, very impressive and it has been so long since i've had any real entertainment so please enjoy your new home but you my dear he looks past you all towards petra who's still trying desperately not to look towards strahd but you can see it's almost like something has grabbed her by the chin and raised her face up you tatiana will suffer i tried oh i tried to understand what you did why you would betray me so but i have not forgiven you i cannot not yet and so I will take from you everything, as you tried to take from me. Maybe after a few more of your lives you will learn. I am the Ancient. I am this land. And I am inescapable. Lowers his hands to either side. Hovers five or six feet up off the ground looks around towards you all. Until we meet again, my new friends, be safe. He continues to rise up into the sky. You can all see those red dots beginning to disappear into the mist behind where he was standing. And Petra begins to openly weep. First point of order. Are the zombies still in the um in the They web? are. They are standing okay. stark still now. Petra is saying to herself over and over again, she saw this. She should have done something, things like that of that nature, kind of implying the fact that she saw this in a vision, but she's never had visions of the future before, only the past, so she didn't think anything of it. What do y'all do? The last two zombies are easily dispatched. Draw one of the stakes from my pouch. And I'm just gonna rage hammer it into the chest of this probably already dead vampire. But yeah, I'll use I my like to be sure my hook hand to just shred one of those zombies. You bastard! Bring her back. Sam is still looking at where Strahd went. Kind of like Strahd went up. Not... Right, and I'm, okay, I'm <laughs> and Sam is just looking straight up. Like he just whispers to himself, that was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell. I mean, Sam's one for showmanship, right? <laughs> oh my god. Um. I don't get it. Why is Merelda not Petra? I... He's trying to. To break Petra. So what's the best way to do it? You can't just kill her. Just kill things around her. Take what's what's important. I mean, I I, I don't know. At, at this point, um, I guess that kind of confirms that you know. 
So they're tied. They're, they're, fate has uh, tied them together. Does he even actually care about Petra, Tatiana, whoever the hell it is? Or is this just some insane game at this point? I he kind of... just wants to torture the soul that just keeps on reliving. Petra would kind of whisper under her breath, not love, obsession. Sanity. I mean, to him it's love. This whole place needs to be dismantled. The abbot, the vampire, the castle, all of it. You know, I've heard of dark stories where uh, I come from. Of people doing, you know, horrible things, you know. And yeah, I mean... I guess, you know... Strahd's the one that does horrible things here. I, I, th I knew they need to think about, you know, me straying within these, um, planes. We all knew this might happen to one of us. We all agreed before we left, before we headed to Valakai. We all agreed what would happen to each of us, or what, what we would do if the fate happened to one of us. We didn't know that we would be taken, but nonetheless, we knew this could be an option. One of us would go, or more. We must continue on for Petra, for our own sanity. I understand that we agreed to go to Valakai and that we wanted to get more information from the Abbot, but I feel like the timeline has been accelerated. We can't afford to play around anymore. We should go to the mountain. We should I see agree. what these faceless gods, what game they're playing. They just walk away. I just walk toward the mountain, if I even know uh, where it is. Points of order, you can take the abbot's word at what you will, but he did say that you wouldn't be able to get into the mountain without his help. Uh, that's, yeah. I would just walk to Valakai. Then. I'd just walk away. Yeah, I'll follow, I'll follow Aurelia. Aurelia, we must stick together. I I just say nothing. I'm just writing in a notebook, very like Killer B style from Naruto. Just like posse in the background, flow in the sky, fly in the sky. All right, just taking notes on what just happened. Just have the right. steel defender throw the vampire's corpse into the woods like a sack of trash. <laughs> nice. And I'll climb on top and follow behind. <clears throat> Can you okay. confirm the thing is out of commission? I'm talking about the vampire. Uh, as the steel defender hucks it, it lands on a twisted, broken branch and is thoroughly impaled on it. That should do it. Nice. Aureli, you must wait. You must wait up. You're understandably upset, but we must stick together. Petra is what Strahd is after. We are just... See Petra kind of pulling herself together now. the best way we can avenge as to stick together without each other we're not going to be able to defeat Strahd she's not dead she's, she was just taken right? yeah she was just taken yeah no she's, she's Strahd she will become part of some sick scheme or game or something he might That's turn so. her we'll fix her when we get to it <laughs> mm. For now, we, we can assume she's gone. I don't know. 
As you say that, Boulevard... Go ahead, Sam. No, go ahead, go ahead. So as you say that, Boulevard, Petra would turn towards you and say, You're right. He's not going to kill her. Since you can see her starting to say something and then stopping, there's something I haven't been telling you. Shocker. That's where I stop. <laughs> that, 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 when she says I have something to say, y'all stop. <laughs> Just start keeping notches on a piece of wood or something. <laughs> so, yeah, right. So she says, since we've arrived in this place, the visions have been changing. My dreams have been different mist and the fog is still there, but it's clearer. I don't think I'm seeing the past anymore. When we came upon the pool, that creature attacked us. I thought I'd seen this before, but I just thought it was another one of our... another one of the memories, another one of the visions of the past that just seemed similar, but... Sorry, I know I should have said something sooner, but... I know... that we will see as again. And I know that when we do, it won't be her. Yes. Vampires have exactly two uses for mortal beings. Food... and servants. She nods. Petra? When the time comes, are you prepared to do what is necessary? We must try to save her. What? Yeah, but, but if save we her. can't. <laughs> There's always another way. <laughs> As like Sam is like laughing in a very surprised tone. Not everything has to end with just, you know, kill this, kill that. There's always the third or the fourth option that's always open. But you don't realize that it is only one or the other. You don't understand. What? You don't. You, you don't understand what these places are like. You, you, it's torture. The many people. What he's gonna do is probably turn her, and then we're gonna have to kill Ez. This isn't a gladiators arena, Sam. This isn't a show. There's no writers, there's no happy ending. There's always a next page for someone. And if we cut off something without even considering another option, then what's the point in even going on right now? She would want us to end it quickly. Sam, I hope... Deep down, everyone wants to be saved. Everyone wants to live. This isn't about just ending it all. Isn't it about ending... So People want to be happy. People want to live. It was so too much. You haven't been in these places then, clearly. They want to live, but they do not want to be undead. Sam, I do hope you're prepared to do what is necessary when the time comes. You'll come Keep around. an open mind. This land will show you the truth. I have seen it myself. I've been, I've lived here all my life. You, you don't seem to understand that, you know. Undeath is a real uh, circumstance, and undeath is uh, not the place you want to be in. Sam, Petra, Petra would have been listening very intently to the things that you were saying and she would put a hand on your shoulder and say, we will try to save her. And if that means releasing her, then we will do that. But you have... You're right. We will try. I will try. If there's another way, then if we find it, of course, we'll go that option. But just as you described humanity's hunger for life, that desire to be alive, it changes, Sam. 
once you become one of those things, that desire is only hunger. Hunger for the next victim. Hunger for blood. So, Bolivar, when you say that, Petra would be thinking really hard. She looks towards you and she says, I don't think he's going to turn her into one of... She gestures towards the bushes where the Steel Defender hucked the body into one of those. I am not I mean, sure what I saw, but I don't think it was that. I'll be sure to pay more attention to these new dreams and visions that I'm having. I'm sure they'll be useful if I only listened and paid attention to this one. Ed, Petra and Ez might still be with us. But I don't think that's what he has in store for her. I hope you're right. So, Petra looks far, looks eastward towards the road, says, If we have any chance of getting her back, of getting out of here, we need to collect our allies, collect the weapons against Strahd. This is the first time she said his name. Collect our weapons against him. And then she looks down the road. First stop of doing that is Valakai. Swiftly, then. All right, everyone. And as you all turn and head, begin heading eastward down the road, going around the puddle in the ground, in the ground where the bodies had laid in wait within a few about 15 20 minutes of traveling you would see Valakai peering out in front of you as the old Zvalich road meanders into a valley that looks to be watched over by the dark brooding mountains to the north and south woods recede revealing a sun a sullen mountain berg surrounded by wooden palisades Thick fog pressing up against the walls. It's almost like the fog is trying to press in, almost like it's looking for a way inside of this place. And Dirt Road ends at a set of sturdy iron gates with a pair of shadowy figures standing behind them. Planted on the ground on the road outside the gates are a half dozen pikes with wolves' heads impaled on them. A sign out front that reads, Welcome to Valakai. And we are going to go ahead and call it a session right there.